Our final speaker of the second session is Amelia Mio, which is supposed to be the first one, but now she's the last one. Um, and her speech will be about feminism, because she's very, very interested in gender equality. So, let's welcome Amelia. Women. 
It can manifest itself into various forms, such as gender-based violence, unequal pay, and limited opportunities for women in education and employment. Feminism emerged under the context of such an oppression, and it challenges the existing power structures that favor men and promote gender equality. While chauvinists view feminism as a threat, because it challenges the tradition of gender roles and stereotypes that would are used to enjoy and deeply ingrained in society. Just as the picture portrays, nothing threatens the patriarchy more than a woman unafraid to demand attention. These the patriarchal society often reinforces these gender norms. So when challenged by feminism, it is seen as a threat. And this can lead to a negative portrayal of feminism being an extreme movement. The occurrence of feminism somehow alerts the patriarchal society and makes them feel threatened. That is how most shamanists view feminism. However, is feminism extreme at its root? The truth is not. As early as that can be traced, all the way back to Mary Wollstonecraft's ideologies in the 18th century Enlightenment movement. She believed that a society was wasting its success because it kept the women in the role of convenient domestic slaves and denied them from economic independence. She also demanded that women should be trained for careers and professions. However, the legit feminism doesn't occur until the 19th century. So I just add a video about the history of feminism and okay, um, let's take a look. emerged in the late 19th and early 20th century and focused on legal and political equality such as the right to vote and on property. Women's suffrage movement was highlighted by the Seneca Falls Convention. Feminisms like feminists like the Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Susan B. Anthony, Ada B. Wells Barnett, and millions of other women who fought for their rights. Not only did they not in the United States, but women around the world have also been constantly fighting to gain basic rights and status in society in Africa, South America, in Asia, and in Europe. Feminists could be seen everywhere, struggling but still fighting for their rights and human lives. made a speech addressing women to make an appearance in politics and international society, increasing our voices and make an appearance in, the po in politics, showing to the world that we're powerful and strong. The second wave of feminism emerged in the 1960s and 1970s and focused on issues such as reproductive rights, workplace discrimination, and domestic violence. The landmarking case of Roy vs. Wade took the stage in 1973, granting and protecting women's rights to abortion. But that was overturned by the Supreme Court last year. I think that's key. That's alerting, because we're holding the world back for the 1970s. Nowadays, some women in the United States doesn't even have the right to abortion. They don't have the right to control their body which makes it more urgent for us to reconstruct our world into a correct feminism or feminism-friendly one, and the world that people perceive feminism as promoting gender equality and strive to achieve power balance. We strive, appeal, and protest peacefully to gain basic rights and human rights as men, as men process centuries earlier than women. I think it is reasonable to say that feminism, on its root, is not extreme at all and doesn't account for extremism. This is a speech by Malala. He was shot by Taliban in, 20, in 2013 
but he was, but she was safe, and she became an education activist. Such a woman is an inspiration of us, and it inspires us to be a woman leader and to increase our voices, to show the man, and to show the patriarchal society that we're capable. I once heard a saying that feminism is essentially about non-fashion. I hope clearing the feminism definition earlier can dispel this misconception. Nevertheless, clearing the ground again, feminism is not about fashion. All feminists believe in is for a woman to be treated equally to men. And we advocate for women's rights based on the equality of sexes. If no one is superior or inferior, just equal. Our agenda is to simply promote gender equality, not to be, not to be deprived from opportunities because of our gender. If someone solely hates men because of their gender, that person is not a feminist. In fact, I think these people are the exact reason why feminism is called male-bashing. Um, feminists, fem true feminists are the victims of this misconception. A popular rumor goes, feminists are a group of stuck up, crazy, and touchy bunch. Honestly, my first thought of this was, what the heck? We're definitely not like this. Feminism, feminists do not lack of humor, but proclaiming they're stuck up, Crazy and touchy is too much. We're not all of people who take social media at the drop of a hat, creating problems out of nothing. Feminists are not scary and laughable social activists who exaggerate everything. We can also converse politely with people without trying to tear everyone apart. And come on, what feminists, what feminism believe in does make sense. For one thing, it improves girls' education. Statistically, over 40% of Nigerian women have never received a formal education. And over 5.5 million girls are out of school. Problem rates are always higher among girls than boys, according to an article published by Indian researchers. An organization called Feminist Coalition changes things by initiating an education program which offers an annual full scholarship and mentorship for brilliant young girls in Nigeria whose largest barrier to a quality education is, in, is financial. They cooperate with William Fowler Memorial College, one of the leading all-girls schools in Nigeria, to provide full-bright scholarships to around 10 girls with low-income backgrounds. A proper and balanced education enables girls to cope with life difficulties and create fulfilling careers. Education is a lighter for women, igniting their potential and ambitions for, for them to be capable of and backed up to pursue a higher, a higher quality of life and alter their innate fate. A popular Chinese saying phrases, which means human beings can conquer nature. Maybe this will exaggerate a little more, but the theory is the same. I believe that education can change things and improve women's conditions, and, and they can basically provide a higher social status for their family in the future generation, which is beneficial to all. Last but not least, I want to clarify one more thing. It could be natural to think that feminists, that fem only female can be a feminist. However, that is not true. Just as one does not have to be an animal to advocate for animals' rights, well, you don't have to be a female to be a feminist. In fact, it might be surprising to find that there are actually quite a few male feminists out there such as Barack Obama and Chris Martin. Barack Obama is actually the first assistant president to identify himself 
as a feminist at the 2016 speech at the United States Women's Summit. During his time in office, he provided training and counseling for girls for women entrepreneurs through small business administration. If you treat women around you as your equals on a personal level, if you think if you think they're as able as men, then you could be a feminist too. And there's absolutely nothing wrong or shameful with that. It's actually something to be proud of. Simplest, you could start by volunteering at Patty Pat and reading feminist literature. I think once my Mary Wilson crafts are great as a start because it is not considered as a true feminist of work and it's good for you to just get a basic understanding of it. Also, you, can, you have to stop sexism when it creeps into the classroom. And also, you can read where you've been joining teenage feminism blogs. If you want to be a feminist, there's multiple ways if you're willing to try. As George Herbert finally said, where there's a will, there's a way. From the first surge of feminism, which focused on legal and political disparities and women's suffrage, to the second wave of feminism in 1960s to 2000s, which broadly fade to, cult to cultural and social strengths, and to this day, our feminist pioneers fall diligently for the gender equality and strive to achieve the power balance. We must have stopped these efforts from fading and avoid taking backward steps. Essentially, tolerating gender inequality and allowing sexism and male chauvinism are, both la are labeling both men and women and restricting them from every social role they could take. Achieving gender equality not only means giving women equal rights as men, but also means, a, but also means allowing both genders to scavenge into their favorable fields regardless of their gender, regardless of how bizarre or unconventional it is, without unpolite comment judging on them. It is time that we can reconstruct our world into a truly bias-free, diverse, and inclusive world, and this can affect us everyone. To end the quote with Emma Watson, both men and women should feel free to be strong. It is time that we all perceive gender on a spectrum instead of two sets of opposing ideals. If we stop defining each other by who we are not and start defining ourselves by who we are, we can all be freer. It's about freedom. Thank you, everyone. So this will be the end of the second session. I hope that you all have a nice